In this video, I'm going to show you how to design a folded name card in Shirkuts a Lot 5. And it would be something similar to this, where you have some letters welded onto, um, you know, basically a shape below it, and then kind of like a mirror image of it where it's folded in the middle. So to begin with, um, over here I have added a basic shape or rectangle, and if you need any help with that, if you're so new to your cuts a lot, you don't know how to add ba basic shapes, just check out section 3.01 of the user manual that's linked uh, in the product description for this video. Then also add your text, again whatever font you want to use, um, just you know pick the font that you want and do the spacing, do ungroup the spacing, and again everything about text is covered in chapter 4. And then also you know your basic shape, you can and of course resize it whatever you want. I have it kind of large right here, but you could make it, you know, much smaller if you wanted to. Just whatever works for you. And resizing, by the way, is covered in section 3.05. All right, so once you have it, leave it just like this, and then we're going to copy and paste it over to a new page. I always kind of like to keep these originals in case you need them later on. Or for example, if you're doing multiple names, well, it's a good idea to kind of, if you want to keep everything the same, then you kind of keep your original here, and you can go back and change your text. Um, so I'm going to select everything and do a Control C, and then I'm going to go over to a new page. And down here, you can add pages, you know, at the at you know, down here on this bar. And then once you select a new page, then you just do a control V to, uh, to paste it in. So now that I have the letters, and so the next step is to make sure they're overlapping the top of the rectangle by just a little bit. So something just like that. And temporarily I will turn off the fill so you can kind of see it maybe a little bit better, see the overlap between the letters and the rectangle. Then you select all and go to path union. Now, and this is where I feel like the method I have is very um, much quicker than some of the other methods I've seen. Because there's a feature in your cuts a lot called the symmetrical mirror. And that is just, this is a perfect application to use symmetrical mirror. So with the shape selected, I go to effects, symmetrical mirror, and this window opens. Now then for this type of uh, symmetrical mirror, I want it to be mirrored right across here at the very top. So from this mirror menu, I'm going to change it to bottom to top. And then what you see here is you see the uh, like kind of like a black box and you can drag this box larger or smaller. So I want the overlap just to be a little bit at the top. So I take it all the way up and then I drop it down just a tiny little bit. And then once I have it there, I can do a preview just to make sure it looks like I'm getting exactly what I want, which I am. I'm getting a mirror image that's not only going to be overlapping my original, but it's going to automatically weld it as well. So that's like one less step I have to worry about. So then I click on OK, and there we have it. There we have the symmetrical mirror, and it's welded onto the original. Okay, so then the last step is just to add a fold line right through the middle. And to do that, I come over to the Tools panel, and I pick this Draw tool. I'll just left click to select it. And then sometimes it can get a little squirrely if you try to do it in the middle, because see how it tries to bring up all the other nodes. So instead, I'm just going to go just a little ways above my project, or I could have come down here, or you know, even you know what? I think I can do it right here on the outside too. I'll just do it over the outside. Just don't get too close to uh, you know to the project right here. I'm going to go just a little bit to the outside, and you don't have to worry about perfect centering yet, because I'm going to show you another little trick to uh, to get it centered. So I'm going to hold down the Shift key, left click once, move across the other side. And left click again, release the shift key, and press the enter key. Again, it's press and hold shift, left click once, left again, release the shift key, press enter, and then go press the arrow key. Now, I, I work with a sky cut, and so with the sky cut cutter, I prefer to leave my, my uh, fold line solid because of the fact I have a scoring tool that will score them. Uh, but if you want dash line cutting, then you would select this line and come over here to uh, the, um, well, let me pop it out, it's the fill and stroke panel. And if you make this larger, you can come down to line style, and you see it's, right now it's like a solid line, and you can just change that to the dashed line of your choice, and then that changes it to dashed, all right? But again, I prefer solid, so I'm gonna go back to a solid line. Okay, and then close that. And now then, to get these perfectly centered, I'm going to, to select it. Now you'll notice when I try the marquee select all of it, because it's a symmetrical mirror, it only selects like this bottom part for whatever reason. But that's okay, because it's still going to center everything perfectly. I'm just going to, again, I make sure I get it all selected. And then let me pop out the position and size panel. And with the position 
size panel. I've got it selected to page, that's fine. And then I'm going to just align and align and that makes sure everything is all aligned. And you'll see now that my fold line goes right through the middle. And so basically that's all I need. I can go ahead and uh, cut that part out. <clears throat> and then if you want an inset, then that's where hang hanging on to this is very handy. So I still have my original, so I can just do a control C. And again, I can put uh, paste this over here, control V, I'm going to move it off to the side. And now then I can, uh, basically you can do, I can do an offset um, of this, but I'm going to make it slightly smaller because I want to be able to kind of see the outside here. In fact, let me come over and show my original uh, and turn back on fill. You'll see that I, I cut the entire thing in, in white and then the lettering I did in black and it's just slightly smaller than the original and same thing for the red, just slightly smaller than the original. So the way I did that, now there's several ways you can use the shadow layer uh, function. I'm going to show you another way you can do it. With the lettering selected, I go to Path, Offset Path. <clears throat> now the difference between shadow layer and offset path is with shadow layer, it retains the original but I don't need the original anymore. So if I use path offset, I will basically the original will disappear. So I'm going to click on inset so it's slightly smaller. I've made it 0.02 inches, so just, you know, a tiny bit smaller and then I click on okay. And you'll see that now I just, you know, I just basically have one of them. All right. So this one I'm going to go ahead and recolor it. I'm going to make it black. And then I can kind of show you what it would look like when I put it up here on top, All right? And then again, it's just barely, barely, barely smaller. But I kind of like the way that looked when it's barely smaller. Okay. And then the last one is just, you know, this this piece right here, which is going to go right on top here. And I'm going to make it slightly smaller. Again, I'm going to go to path, offset path. Um, I'm going to make it, you know, 0 0.02, inset, make sure inset's marked. Click on OK. And then I'm going to change the color of it to red to kind of match what, uh, oops, I didn't have it selected. There we go. All right, and so it's just slightly smaller. And so basically after I cut it out and then I glued these pieces on top and I folded it and there you have it. That's how easy it is to make one of these name plates um, or foldable name tags or placemat cards or whatever you want to call them in shortcuts a lot. And if you like this video, think about uh, getting the Scrappy Doo Classroom. Rob and I have made over 150 videos all on Shortcuts a lot, how to design, understanding all the functions, understanding all the settings. So if you have any questions, please do let me know. Thanks for watching.